with Eternal Radio, sounds to energize your faith. Welcome to The Supernatural with Laura Maxwell. In these programs, we'll hear true supernatural accounts from those who have tried various spiritualities. Ex-New Age Truth Seeker Mario has been on many, many radio shows, including one by Rob Rennie of New York, and he has a great YouTube channel called The Vigilant Christian. Hi, Mario. Hi, how's it going? Okay, how's it going? It's going great, thanks for asking, Laura. Good, that's great. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show, and um, I saw your testimony where you were interviewed by Chris White. Yeah. On his excellent YouTube channel as well, and yeah, it really just touched me, so I'm so pleased that you've come on today. That's awesome. Thanks for the opportunity. Awesome. So can you tell us, really just dive right in, Mario, and and tell us, you know, why did you start getting involved in in the New Age and the Truth Movement? What attracted you? For sure. So when I was uh, in high school is when I started to uh, ask myself deeper questions. I kind of went through an awakening at that point in my life, and I wanted to know what the purpose of life was. So I grew up Catholic. And that made it so that immediately I didn't get involved with that. I had, you know, bad experiences and I figured, well, the way this can, I was really drawn to yoga, Eastern mysticism and uh, the tarot cards with astrology, anything really that was tuning into what I was perceiving as the supernatural realm. And uh, I kind of went through an awakening that, you know, there is something more to life. And then, Uh, those things started to draw me in. So I would just practice things like yoga and mindfulness meditations. Uh, I learned how to empty my mind, Uh, went to uh, Buddhist temples to uh, uh, get the the Buddha consciousness, which, you know, it took me several years to get, but I got to that place. And, Mm -hmm. you know, for a long time, I thought it was really good. I thought it was helping me. Um, I would even have problems in my body as well. I would get sick in my stomach and I would go get some Reiki treatment, uh, chakra balancing, all sorts of stuff like that. And for a long time, like I said, it it was going amazing. I I was uh, on my way to becoming a yoga instructor. Um, I was studying the Bhagavad Gita and and the different postures and uh, all that kind of stuff. And um, it wasn't until I started reading Doreen Virtue, who uh, really started to, to talk about making contact with your spirit guides. Uh-huh. And that really interested me. So I, you know, I did the certain meditations and I called upon them. And I remember one time me and all my friends were sitting in a circle and we're doing a meditation and there was like a presence that came in the room and we were all in deep meditation. No one even had their eyes open and we all moved back simultaneously at the same time because like we all felt that there was a presence in the room. So at that moment, I, I just remember I was like, oh, my goodness, like, I think we've made contact finally, you know, because like, I was trying to contact them. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I uh, did certain meditations because I had opened up my third eye and I was able to kind of communicate with them because in the New Age movement, they teach you clear audience, clear sentience and all different techniques on how to heighten your senses in order to contact these entities from the spirit realm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, through different channeling methods and tarot cards and uh, m- meditations and things that I was doing, I was able to communicate to them. And the message that I received from them at the time, and this was uh, before 2012, this was about 2007, is that, you know, humanity is about to take a big shift in consciousness. And mm-hmm. uh, we're here, we're the ascended masters and uh, we're archangels and we're here to, to raise the vibrations of planet Earth and we're going to use you, Mario, and you're going to start for us uh, a consciousness awakening in the world and all this stuff. So yeah. I, I was like, this is amazing. I'm like, I'm, I'm part of something really big here. And, you know, there's a lot of people at the time uh, in the truth movement. David Icke was one of them who was kind of uh, exposing this, you know, exposing uh, that there is stuff going on in the establishment of a new system in the world. 
uh, you know, militarily, geopolitically or whatever, but uh, that there's also a spiritual realm. But mm-hmm. obviously he was deceived and so was I. So, yeah. you know, I really, I really started to communicate with these beings. And for about a year or two, or uh, they were like my main sources of guidance. And uh, I would, if I had a problem, I would go to these beings and everything. And then uh, I stumbled across a, a YouTube video ironically enough, and uh, it was a researcher uh, that uh, is now one of my good friends, Keith, and uh, Chris White actually in the documentary itself as well. Uh, it's Age of Aquarius, Age of Evil, and yeah, in that doc, it's, yeah, it's, so it's really, really good. It's, it's uh, Keith Thompson, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so, it's a wonderful, could you just repeat the title of it for yeah, listeners? for sure. It's Age of Aquarius, Age of Evil. I know Chris White has it uh, on his channel, and so does Keith. Uh, yeah. Keith as well. So very fantastic because without seeing that documentary for me, mm-hmm. it wouldn't have, like that was the one that put the pieces of the puzzle together. I was finally brought to the realization that, okay, yeah. well, there is a new world order. That is true. There is a system going up uh, that uh, the governments, the secret governments are working together to bring about, but there is also a spiritual system that's being brought into existence as well. And uh, some of my research, uh, you know, already I had discovered this concept of the externalization of the hierarchy and things like that. So when he put it all together, it was really eye opening. And I remember I was sitting there in my, my apartment with my girlfriend at the time. And I had literally just started crying because I could not believe that everything I had believed up until that point wasn't real. I had so uh, 100% thought that, you know, that enlightenment, transformation of consciousness was salvation, that that could, that was the truth. Yeah. Uh, I, I believed in, you know, we could become gods ourselves through the acquisition of knowledge. So it was shocking to me to, mm-hmm. to find out that that was actually a satanic deception. So after I seen that, I, I kind of just, I was, I didn't know what to do. I remember I went to the, uh, uh, my, my spirit guides and the main one was Archangel Michael. And uh, this was the first time that I had kind of heard of Jesus in this way that, uh, you know, um, there's demons and they can masquerade as angels of light. Sure. And that's exactly what they did to me. They would yeah. come in the form of an angel of light. So I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is exactly what the Bible says mm-hmm. uh, about these beings. Right. So, you know, I went to uh, Archangel Michael and I go, uh, you know, I'm hearing about this, this Jesus from the Bible and, you know, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Now, I wouldn't communicate to him, but you could, you could, you know, there was different ways of, 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 well, yeah, communicating, but not like talking. But all I remember is immediately once I started to have my eyes open to the real Jesus and uh, the fact that demons could transform themselves, they were liars, you know, not everything in the spirit realm is okay. Yeah. Um, you know, the the beings that were my spirit guides, they, they weren't no more, for, they weren't my buddies anymore. What once were these beautiful beings that were there to help me shift my consciousness, they came, they turned really demonic on me. And I remember uh, there was even a point I'd be laying in my bed and I couldn't move because I was getting choked out. And uh, this is something that uh, Chris White uh, helps a lot of people with. And that's... Um, uh, I forget the name there, when you're away. Yeah, sleep Sleep, paralysis. uh, Yeah, exactly. So uh, I had an experience of that where I was laying in bed and I couldn't move and I had to call uh, a guy who I knew was with the Lord and he started praying and the attack left. So, uh, you know, I I started going through stuff like that. Even I'd I'd come home and make a protein shake and, you know, I had done so much third eye meditation and it was just, I would receive so many visions through it that, Even after I started realizing this, they were like tormenting me. I'd be making a protein shake and I would see a vivid vision in my eye, my third eye about, you know, a demon decapitating me and doing all sorts of weird, sick, twisted things uh, just just to torment me and uh, yelling at me that Satan owns me, that Jesus could never save me and like all this stuff. And I remember I'm sitting there going like, okay, this, this, this isn't happening, but I'm seeing it in my spirit. Yeah, eye, like, yeah. you know, so I, you know, I it's totally... amazing. It's amazing, Mario, because what, what you went through, I went through that too. And so did my mother. Um, just the things you've been saying, you know, the, the spirit guides and the so-called dead relatives yeah. that we'd spoke to for years, the same thing happened to us. They tur- they suddenly showed their true colors and began That's attacking it. us and being really evil and all that you're saying. So, yeah, I totally identify with you. Please continue. 
Yeah, no, that that's exactly it, right? Like, so this is the point where they're not they're not my friends anymore. They've switched yeah. over from, um, and and it's you know to the listeners listening, that's something that you know if you are communicating with these beings, it's not at the the start that they're going to show themselves at the start. Uh, like you had said, mine. There was even one that came as my dead my dead grandpa. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, he this demon because it's a demon and it has access to being around my grandfather. It, it, I believe it was a familiar spirit to my grandfather. Yeah, and it, yeah. And it it comes later telling me things about him that there's no way that you know anyone could know. Yeah. But it's, you know, so th- there's the deception. I remember I would say things, say things to my mom and she'd be like, are you, oh my goodness, you know, like this is her dad, but it wasn't. It was a spirit that was, you know, familiar to my grandfather who was relaying this information for the purpose of deceiving me into trying to do exactly what the Bible tells us not to do. Yeah. And it tells us very clearly not to contact the dead. And that's for this reason, because demons masquerade. So anyways, I, I thought that's an interesting point. Kind of cool uh, that you went through that yeah. as well. De- yeah. Definitely, yeah, so, and you know, even the Bible says that the dead can't return to us. So, that's you know, it. some people say to me, "Well, maybe sometimes it's my dead grand Laura, and sometimes it's a demon." And I'll say, "Well, no, because the dead can't return. It's always a demon." That's a, exactly. Yeah. And God will not allow them. And the thing that happens that's that's difficult with this one is that they're coming at like when we lose a loved one. There's a trauma there. There's an emotional hurt. Mm-hmm. And we, we naturally want to see them again. So the demons know how to, how to put, like, work on our weaknesses, you know. Because mm-hmm. uh, some people get a lot of healing from these things, you know. I, I, I felt like I was getting closer to my grandpa. I never met him, you know. He died when I was actually in the womb. So here I am thinking I'm actually getting closer to a grandfather that I've never had the chance to meet. But now I can meet him. But guess what? At the end... It was a demon, and that was hard to handle, you know, because yeah, yeah. you you start really believing that it is grandpa or it is your sister or whoever, you know. And uh-huh. that this is what we're talking about, though. The Bible talks about them being de- deceivers. This is the uh, the nature of these fallen spirits is to be highly, highly deceptive. So they're going to do uh, things like this. So it's an interesting thing. So. Um, Back to the story is, you know, I'm waking up, I'm realizing, like, these spirit guides, they're not good anymore. I watched the DVD by uh, Keith Thompson online, and uh, it just blew me away. I just started getting into Chris White at that point, and I'm watching all his mm-hmm. research, and I'm, I'm going, man, this stuff adds up, you know? Like, this is, because I had always been a seeker, even when I was, and I was, uh, this was like almost 10 years later, I was in the New Age for just about 8 to 10 years and I had always, always seeked. And I think that's the most important thing as well is, you know, just keep seeking. Even when you're, you're in God, you can always find deeper truths as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that's what I did. I just kept seeking and I found myself at a point there where everything I thought I had believed up until that point was wrong. Um, you know, and it, it, it couldn't be because at that point I had believed that, well, Christians can be true and uh, you know, Buddhists can be true and everyone, you know, and, and this yeah. kind of tr- truth is relative thing. So, you know, it was very hard to, to take away from that. But I kept seeking. Uh, then I started to uh, seek out a church. And you did, it, sorry, Mario, to interrupt yeah. you, but I'm just remembering something. You did automatic writing too? Yeah. Uh, when I was, um, yeah, if you want to, t- this is, I'm going to try to shorten the thing, but uh, okay. if you want to, if you want to bring up points the, specifically, for sure. Uh, one of the things was I, I experienced a lot of supernatural phenomenon when I was practicing this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was one of the most uh, attractive things to practicing these these rituals and these uh, quote unquote spiritual practices is that. I was able to tune into a supernatural realm. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of the things that I was really good at is because I had achieved good meditation. And meditation is basically the ability to empty your mind. And I was able to empty myself pretty well. I would have uh, big gaps of empty thought because what you'll do is you'll take a certain like breath and focus on the inhalation and then the exhalation. And you're just keeping your mind. You're trying to get spaces in between. Well, I, I was particularly good at this. Some people can't get their minds to do that. So that made me more susceptible to certain, um, now looking back, demon possession. This sure. is what it was doing. Yeah. I was 
uh, emptying my entire self, and then I would call upon the angel or the spirit there uh, yeah. to work through me, and I would literally feel it come in my body, and it would enter me, and that's, I could grab, like, sometimes uh, it depends on what it wanted to do. It was very fluent. I never really knew uh, what spirit wanted to say or what it was going to do when I allowed it to come in, so I would have, like, a, a pen and paper there. I'd have a tarot deck. I'd have my astrology book, and it was up to the spirit where it would go. Sometimes it was going to give a message through a tarot card. Sometimes it would give a message through an astrology reading, reading certain conjunctions and planets of that person's chart. Uh, or it would just grab the pen and just start writing yeah. automatically. Yeah. Uh, so I never really knew how the messages were going to be delivered, but those were some of the methods that I used. And auto writing, uh, for the listeners not knowing what that is, is I would open myself up and the spirit would come in me and you put your hand on the paper and your hand just goes and you're not, I, I'm not thinking about what I'm going to write. And by the time yeah. I'm done, I've just done two pages. Yeah. Um, an, another interesting thing as well is I study the entertainment industry on my YouTube channel and a lot of popular entertainers report having that kind of phenomenon. Uh, yeah. Even the, yeah. the Harry Potter books uh, have been written where she's waking up in the middle of the night and receiving all this information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I, ch I show in my research that uh, this is because in Hollywood it's popular to practice new age and occult practices in order to, you know, have better performances and stuff yeah. like that. I've heard that too, Mario. And um, I remember watching my mother. My mother used to do automatic writing. And as you say, she would meditate because meditation helps these demons come in. And then right. they would come in, they would take over her, and they would actually write essays for university. Um, and she would hand in the essay and, um, you know, get top marks, even though she hadn't bothered studying and stuff like that. Um, yeah. yeah, so, you know, these, these, this phenomena is real, um, as you know, but, but demonic. But please continue. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> sorry, I, what was I saying exactly? Um, you were talking about the uh, the astrology and the okay, yeah, the auto writing. The auto writing. So, yeah, Sorry. so that's how it, it would. I was just finishing up. So it basically, like, that's how it works. Is just there would be different ways, and auto writing was one of them. Uh, other supernatural things too that occurred. Um, I was, I swear, I was so close to levitation, but I never came off the ground. But I was moving crystals. People could put a crystal, and I could with uh, without even touching it. I put my hand on both sides and move it front to back and stuff like that. So uh, I, other things too, psychic abilities. I was able to tell people like pick a number from one to ten, and I would have a spirit tell me, whisper me, and nine out of ten times I was getting the number. So um, this is what you know. And, and at the time, I'm thinking, hey, this is good. This is the transformation of consciousness. I'm reaching higher levels of enlightenment. And, mm -hmm. you know, these are the new psychic abilities that I need to be developing and stuff. So mm -hmm. it, it's very deceptive. And, you know, anyone who out there is, is practicing that, you have to keep that in mind as well. Is There is a supernatural component, and you are going to see supernatural things happen. But it doesn't mean because it's supernatural, it's good. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the mistake that I made. I figured, hey, if, if there's some type of phenomenon behind this, well, it's, it, it's got to be good. Let's figure it out, you know, mm -hmm. and I uh, didn't find out till later on and I was too far gone that <laughs> that, that wasn't a good thing. Yeah. So um, at this point, you know, I, I, I watched that documentary. I went to um, in the process of start uh, looking for a church because God just put it on my heart like you need to go to, to a church and uh, talk about what you've been in. So um, I went to the, the first church that I found online and the, the, the guy was preaching the gospel. And I remember I, as soon as he's preaching the gospel, I'm like, this is the truth. This is everything I've actually been searching for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for, so I, I, I just accepted the, the Lord in that moment. And at the end of the service, he asked uh, for a prayer line. Mm -hmm. And uh, I go to the front, and some girl in the corner of my eye, she just locks eyes on me, walks over really intensely, uh, says something like, oh, you've been in the Buddhism and talking to spirits. And I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah, okay, you know, like, uh, yeah, I have. So, and she, yeah, yeah, and she's like, well, God mm -hmm. told me I need to pray for you. So I go, well, of course you can pray. Like, mm -hmm. there's no way you know this stuff. So yeah. uh, she begins to pray, and immediately I manifest a demon. So because what I had done was uh, I had done a lot of the open yourself up and allow them to, to enter, right? Like I was yeah, a channel. Yeah. So they had, I, I believe looking back now, 
because of these occult practices and new age practices that I'd done, I had allowed the authority of those uh, entities in my temple, in my body. Yeah. And they, they weren't leaving that because that, that was their dwelling place. Uh, to deceive people because they were working through me to deceive mm -hmm. a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, God forgave me, but that's what they were doing. And, you know, um, so they did not make it easy. I remember I started speaking in, like, very deep, grotesque voices, and um, my eyes started rolling in and behind my head, and I would come back to it, like, realizing, like, oh, my goodness, this is actually happening. And mm -hmm. I'm like, Jesus, save me. And then, like, I, the demon would possess me again and be, I'm not letting go. And I'm like, ro go, going back and forth in this. And I was totally freaked out. And yeah. uh, the, the girl that was actually praying for me, I remember I, when I would get possessed, I had this anger for her. Like I was so angry at her and mm -hmm. I felt like I wanted to grab her and grab her. And I swear to this day, if I could have grabbed her, I could have probably thrown her like 10 feet in the air. Yeah, but yeah. like there was something in the spirit realm stopping me like I it was, it was crazy it was like I was literally caught in between angels and demons going to war for my body in that little mm -hmm. space and time and by the end of it I just kept on calling on the name of Jesus the entire church stopped what it was doing so I had an entire church uh, praying for me and uh, yeah. I was I was delivered filled with the Holy Spirit and um, yeah so that's how I got awesome. saved from it awesome. all yeah. and uh, even after that for anyone listening, I still had to do a lot of spiritual warfare. Yeah. I think that that's going to be, um, it's something even me and Chris White talked about in our interview. And I've mm -hmm. seen as well with my work to dealing with this testimony and people that have come out of it is, um, because you've opened yourself up so much to the spirit realm, there's going to be an extra battle that you're going to have to go through because although Christians, you know, read in their Bible that these things are real, that there are angels and deceiving spirits and stuff. I don't think you really get it till you've lived it. And, yeah. um, you know, if you're a person like me uh, or, uh, you know, Laura here and, and you're listening, it's, it might be harder because you've now seen those things. But I do believe that uh, God used it for uh, making me into a stronger spiritual warrior. You know, I understand the spirit realm. I understand now that when people are into bondage and they're not believing the gospel, that there is a spiritual component to it. And yeah. you, you can go to war against that spiritual, uh, you know, stronghold or stuff like that. So. Definitely, Mario, I would agree. Um, I've, I'm now about 19 years out of the new age. And in the those 19 years, um, what you went through, I went through, obviously, I needed to get the demons cast out me. And since then, I've 19 years, I've saw it time and time again. People who have been into New Age or the old cult, you know, they've, you know, Christians have had to cast those demons out of them. But as you say, you know, you then become stronger in the Lord and you don't get, some people think you're always attacked, but you're not because once the demons are cast out, you, you know, you work through that process of, of sanctification. And as you say, you become stronger and able to help others. Mm hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like now it's pretty cool. I like for I wouldn't have been able to help too many people the first year or so because I was the one needing, you know, sure. the prayer and the ministry. Sure. But yeah. you know, it's um I go to the gym a lot, so I always use the, the gym analogy and like if you go for a good workout, it usually hurts and it's almost like God puts you in the ring and he's gonna make a warrior out of you and it can be strong, but like mm -hmm. people who overcome the demonic realm at that level like that's a powerful spiritual warrior. And then I encourage you after to go out there and, and to help the demon possessed. And it's a real reality. People don't understand. And, mm -hmm. you know, as the new age movement is growing and the, the rise of the antichrist system is coming into existence, there's going to be more of this. And this ministry yeah. is going to be more necessary because more people will be deceived uh, into opening these doors in their lives. And, um, Absolutely. You know, um, so. That just reminds me, sorry to interrupt, but you're bringing no up problem. so many interesting points. Um, you mentioned earlier about the the famous 2012 New Age shift where they believed it would um, raise right. global consciousness. And I remember that because I, I did a TV program um, in 2011, I think. It was just before that so-called shift. And I remember hearing about it all. And now that I was a Christian, I knew it's not going to be a, a you know a good shift. It's actually going to be a Luciferian, uh, mm -hmm. anti, you know, release of more Antichrist spirits. Um, so yeah, as as you say, 
Um, sorry, I forgot what I was saying there. <laughs> yeah, well, well, basically, Luciferian and, and spirits of Antichrist. And since 2012, we've saw so many more people now worldwide who are needing help because they mm -hmm. have they have um, entertained these things, and now they are actually needing um, demonic deliverance. Yeah, exactly. And it's all. I think it's only the start. I don't even think it's full blown. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that, uh, like the elite, uh, these people bringing about the Antichrist kingdom, they work order out of chaos. And I think that they're going to specifically engineer a time of war and chaos and all this stuff. And this religion will be the answer, you know, like they're going to create division and war and all this stuff so that it'll be perfect for the Antichrist Messiah to come along and just be like, come together, you know, this is, we need to stop fighting each other and be one and all this talk about yeah, global unity yeah. and stuff like that yeah, and peace. Totally. And the Bible says that when they say peace, sudden trouble will fall upon them. So, so. And, and you know. we know that even, even politicians do say things like uh, never let a good crisis go to waste. You know, they, they, mm -hmm. will, they will admit that if there's problems in the world, um, they will then bring in new laws that people will accept more willingly just yeah. because they're desperate for, for help. That's it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, another interesting thing too about 2012, it's funny because uh, I used to say when I was a new ager that, you know, like, because the way that it, we had thought it was going to happen, and here's another point as well. Um, I had received channeled information about 2012, and mm -hmm. this was about in 2007 uh, by my spirit guides uh, telling me that there's a global shift coming, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing happens to David Icke. He's in communication with his spirit guides. He calls them the guys. Uh, again, deceiving spirits, but they told him 2012, consciousness shift, uh, higher psychic abilities, etc. Then there was even David Wilcock, and you, uh, he's uh, channeling Ra. And you can go through mm -hmm. a list of New Age gurus. Yeah. All, of, all of those spiritual beings were telling us that there is a shift coming and that all these mm -hmm. things were going to happen. It never yeah. occurred the way that they said it. Not so exactly, yeah. at what point do we uh -huh. start going, hmm, Wait, how Lennon? trustworthy are these spirits? Exactly, you know? yeah. Uh, so I, uh, an interesting thing to point out as well is I got saved in 2010, but I waited till December 21st, 2012 to get baptized. So that's mm -hmm. the day I went and got baptized in Jesus. Yay. I was like, that's the real consciousness Yay. shift right there. That's, <laughs> because here's the thing as well. Uh, Satan with this, um, it's kind of like a deception, right? The ascension, uh, we as Christians will ascend. Jesus will glorify us. He will do that for us. Give us a new body, an eternal body. Satan in the New Age movement, he tries to make them do it but his way. You know, he always takes Jesus out. And it's just, it's a counterfeit, you know, yeah, and that's what yeah. people don't realize is mm -hmm. he's taking somewhat of some spiritual truth and then, you know, he's making people go after it. Totally. And I get a lot of people that'll think I, I'm take oh, you're like, you're bad for people spiritually because you don't want them to develop their psychic abilities and all this stuff, you know, and they don't understand why it is that God would prevent us even from you know, looking at that, th those things in this world. Yeah. Uh, but I always tell them, it's like a father. A good father doesn't let his little children just play with any toys. Mm -hmm. You know, he recognizes that there's times of maturity for the children. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with the father. He realizes we're not mature enough to, you know, go and, and, and dabble with those spiritual things in our current state of fallen uh, nature. So, you know, it's, um, it's a deception. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> totally, totally. And I think as well, people don't realize that, you know, they think that psychic abilities are, are good. And of exactly. course, you know, we love psychics, we love mediums, you know, they're genuinely warm hearted people. We're not saying they're evil. We're just saying, sadly, they've been deceived. And, and often when a person comes to Christ, finds that their psychic abilities vanish because the demons yeah. have been cast out of them. Suddenly they're not psychic anymore. Um, yeah. Just like the Bible says, Acts 16, that the girl that was um, the fortune teller with the spirit of divination, when the mm -hmm. apostles, you know, when the apostles cast that out of her, she would have lost her income as a psychic because the psychic yeah. demon was then gone. Yeah, and that's the that's an interesting point as well. I experienced that myself, where I was, ha like I said, I was having all those supernatural abilities. I was capable of doing it. But even while I was doing them, I knew that I needed to be in contact with my angels. There was even times where uh, maybe I had a long day. I didn't sleep well. It was harder for me to meditate. You know, I just, there was days you would even be off as a psychic, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And 
I, I would try and contact the spirits and sometimes I'd have to say like, no, I, I can't do it. Like it's not going to come through. Uh, then, like you said, you become Christian and you, can, you can't do that stuff at all. Like it's completely gone, you know? So mm -hmm. you really have to start questioning where those powers actually come from, you know? And it's, it, a lot of people don't realize it, it is demonic and I didn't realize as well. And it's not that I was a bad person because I didn't realize that. I was mm -hmm. just deceived. And that yeah. is the, na yeah. the nature of this. It's spiritual deception. Totally. We're not saying, like, I wasn't an evil person. In fact, when I was trying to do those things, yeah, I was, uh, you know, I was against God and a fallen sinner. But it wasn't in my heart to do it for deceiving people. No, but regardless, no. I, I was being used by the deceiving spirits to deceive people without realizing it. So, totally, totally. You know, and, and as you say, you know, it, it's counterfeit. The psychic abilities are counterfeit because when, when a person comes to Jesus you know, they may, Jesus may give them the, the, the gift of prophecy, the gift of healing, and yeah. they are supernatural gifts, but, you know, obviously they're the pure gifts. The psychic exactly. abilities are just the, the demonic form of it. Oh, yeah. If you, I find if you start looking all over the New Age movement, you see all sorts of little truths, but then he twists it. Exactly. Like, yeah. they're developing their psychic spiritual gifts, but God bestows the gifts of the Spirit for those of us who are born again by the Holy Spirit. So Satan comes along, he takes a spiritual truth, which is spiritual gifts by the Spirit, and then he gives spiritual gifts by his counterfeit spirit. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and this is over and over, and even... You know, promising that they will become eternal. At the end of the day, that is the promise of God. He's going to create a kingdom for us where we will live forever. So these New Agers are deceived into following a path of trying to achieve their own salvation, trying to raise up their own consciousness, own vibrations, to be at the worthy vibration of the next golden eon, the age of Aquarius, the golden dawn, whatever they want to call it. So again, they have a counterfeit where God has an eternal kingdom that's coming and we will live eternally in that, but they're going a different route. You know, yeah, they're trying yeah. to do it. They're trying to achieve the things of God, but by their own means and by their own. And that's what Satan always wants to do, make you rely upon your own self. So, you know, this is where uh, the enlightenment comes in that I can achieve my own heaven, nirvana, whatever through my own meditations and works and rituals or whatever totally uh, so. and, and and satan just wants to deceive people into thinking there is no heaven there is no hell yeah because he wants to take them to hell obviously mm -hmm. oh yeah of course <laughs> that's the other thing because in the new age you're taught to live in the now mm -hmm. uh and that the, you know the now is eternal that there's no heaven or hell or anything like that so yeah you know, it, and there's the poison, you know, he takes mm -hmm. a lot of the good stuff and then he, he, take, he takes out the things that obviously people, you know, don't want to accept that there's actually a judgment after, yeah. you know, people, people run around saying like, you only live once, that little saying YOLO, but they don't realize, yeah, you do only live once, but then the judgment, <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. we only have one life, but then after that, God will judge us according. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, I personally too, I think that, um, if anyone is listening and, you, and you're starting to look at this Christian thing, it's hard coming uh, to Christianity because of all the the uh, misconceptions that there are about it. You know, yeah, I remember yeah. I didn't, I didn't want to even uh, entertain the thought because you know I was an enlightened guru basically. Like, there's no way Christianity is so simple and only simple-minded people. But you know, a lot of that mindset comes from wrong understandings, and you know, like. People need to start seeking. If you're a true seeker, seek the Bible and the truth about the Bible. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you'll find out that a lot of the lies against it they're they're false and they can be easily misproven. And mm -hmm. uh, the Bible actually has the answer to the entire you know New Age lie and the deception. So. Definitely, Mario, and I think you know I was the same. My, my mother, we were the same. We believed that out of all the religions that 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 there is that the Christians were the ones who were holding back the, <laughs> the full ascension because the Christians were so um, narrow-minded and they wouldn't open up to the New Age. Therefore, right. they, were, they were holding back. Um, yeah. You know, and, and the spirit guides would tell us and spirits would tell us the Christians worldwide will need to be killed before, yeah. the, before the full awakening could occur and all this. You know, and when you think about that, that's just genocide, you know. <laughs> 
Yeah, but the thing that's interesting about that is I, I've actually studied and it looks like, uh, to me, that looks like it lines up perfectly with the scriptures because mm -hmm. uh, Jesus, Jesus does talk about the end times and specifically that we will be put to death and yeah, hated by yeah. all nations. Yeah. So the way I've looked at it with my study of end times and uh, the, the truth movement is that um, they're going to establish that system and uh -huh. how they're, how they're going to do it is... Uh, they're going to, like I said, engineer the chaos, and then uh, the solution will be this global religion of peace led mm. by this Antichrist. And uh, they're, like you mentioned, there's already channeled information right now saying that there needs to be a cleansing of Christians. And they won't say Christians, but if you look at what they're actually saying, that is what they're saying, because yeah. they're saying anyone who can't think like us, which means the higher consciousness, the, the uh -huh. Brahma mm -hmm. conscious evolved thinking. Well, if you can't think like that, which would mean fundamental Christians, we would never deny our belief and then just accept this new age doctrine. So we will be the ones that are holding back humanity and needing to be cleansed and things like that. So imagine in a world, though, where it's absolute chaos and there's nothing going on but war and everyone is so sick and tired of it with, you know, the mm -hmm. pestilences and this and that, and they're, they're yeah. pushed to the end. And then they're told, oh, we can finally come together. This can end. You know, we can have the old world back and we need to come together. We Christians are the ones who are going to be saying, no, this guy there that's leading you into this, he's the Antichrist and this is satanic and wrong. They're going to yeah. want to kill us. They're going to yeah. be like, look, it's true. Exactly. They, yeah. they are holding us back. Exactly. We, we, we can't move on. Mm -hmm. We need to kill them. And then they will fulfill the, the, the biblical prophecy. And that is... Uh, Uh, you know, how the new new age fits into the new world order. And I think that's important, too, because um, if you don't understand the new age movement, don't even think that you understand the new world order. Because uh, you got guys like David Icke out there. And on the one hand, he's, he's exposing very well the new world order and what's going on in the government. But on the other hand, he's promoting the spiritual system uh, that is going to be The, the, the glue that holds the entire uh, New World Order Antichrist kingdom together. Totally, um, so, totally. And you know, I think it's, it's so obvious, you know, to, to us, just because we've come out of that, that within the New Age movement, um, you know, they, they do all, they believe that a, a Messiah figure will come and he will be, you know, the, the Maitreya, he will be a Messiah to the Jews, he will be a Messiah to the Muslims, he will be a, a God that every religion can look to, um, which is basically the Bible shows as it is the Antichrist. Um, That's but it. It'll be so P PC, you know, it won't be politically correct for anyone to say anything otherwise, and that's why the Christians will be definitely persecuted. That's it, exactly. Uh, we're almost at the end now, Mario. Um, yeah. could, could you please really just... Um, share with folks your YouTube channel, your Facebook details. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, you can find me on YouTube. I've got five channels I'm working on right now, but the main one is uh, just The Vigilant Christian. So you can go to youtube.com slash The Vigilant Christian. Uh, that's my main channel. What I try and do on that one is uh, share this testimony that you've heard here, mm -hmm. uh, trying to help people come out of the New Age movement, identify that. Um, I also expose the, the New World Order and how I try and do it more uh, Bible focused where, uh, you know, this entire system that's coming about is prophesied in the word of God, which gives us indication that God is true. He knows the beginning from the end and the end in the beginning. You don't need psychics to find out about the end days and what's about to come. God told us in his word. Yeah. Uh, so I, I focus on that and the entertainment industry as well. Uh, I'm turning 30 this year, so uh, when I was growing up as a teenager in high school, uh, music and culture had a huge impact on me, and it sent me in the wrong direction. So I expose that and try and show people that, uh, you know, we need to stand for righteousness and what's good and loving and uh, godly in our generation more than ever. So I, I do that. I also now started a uh, Bible teaching channel as well. I'm not a theologian or a pastor, but uh, I want to study the word with brothers and sisters online. So mm -hmm. you can you can join us on that channel to do Bible studies. And uh, I have a manhood channel as well. Uh, me and my uh, other uh, godly bros, who's uh, my brothers in Christ, we are uh, trying to help people with manhood, relationship, love, uh, marriage, sexual purity, and stuff like that. 
um, just biblically based as well. So, and I have my backup channel and my health channel. So if you go to the main one, you'll be able to check out everything I'm doing. And, um, I really appreciate the opportunity, Laura. That's awesome. Thanks. Well, it's awesome to have you, Mario. And if people go to your main channel, will they find links to Keith Thompson and Chris White's channel? Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure Chris is there. I don't know if I have Keith. Uh, But if you put Keith Truth in YouTube, he comes up as Keith Thompson. So he's a a good bro. We've stayed in contact over the years, and I I talk to him regularly. He's hopefully going to put out his next documentary soon there. So Yeah. His, yeah, yeah, I really like yeah Keith Thompson and Chris White. I would recommend anyone to to listen to it because they really like yourself. They really just explain it all so well. And um, yeah, so if it simple, wasn't for those simply. two, if it wasn't for those two in my beginning walk, I wouldn't have came out of the New Age movement. I think that um, the body of work that they've done is so important for people in the Truth movement and just uh, in the New Age movement as well. Uh, like you said, they're very articulate and good at explaining and putting all of this into perspective. Perspective, because you can go and listen to other people, like you know, get a Zeitgeist movie out there or something, and mm-hmm. or a David Ike, and they might seem right, but then at the end of the day, you need to test them. And that's kind of the one cool thing that these guys have done. Uh, you know, they they debunked all of that stuff in the beginning. If you write uh, Zeitgeist debunked or Peter Joseph debunked. Ancient Aliens debunked, all this stuff by Chris White there. He really does a good job at just testing. You know, yeah, it's not yeah. it, it's not about, like, he's trying to harm these people, but if these people have false information that is harming people, we need to test their information. Sure. And that's what he does. Uh, it's not a personal attack on them as people, mm-hmm. but, you know, it's a test of their material because their material is influencing a lot of minds and people. Yeah. So. Uh, it needs to be tested, and he they basically destroy it, which is good, you know, and people need to be brought to that awareness and brought totally, to the truth, yeah. which is Jesus and the Word of God. Totally, and as you say, Mario, um, I advise people to test the spirits too, and people yeah. some, sometimes contact me because they've saw me on TV, they've saw me saying, test the spirits. The, ne- the next time the spirit comes to you as your dead gran or as your spirit guide, test it. You know, don't, don't just trust it's your dead gran or spirit guide. Test it in the name of Jesus Christ. Who are yeah. you? And, you know, mediums have contacted me and said, Laura, I did what you suggested. That You know, the next time my spirit guide showed up, uh, I tested it in Jesus' name. And, hey, it, it was actually a demon. And, so, you know. <laughs> That's I've, exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I've yeah. now, I've gave my life to Christ and, and I'm awesome. getting deliverance. So, you know, again, we're not saying these people are bad. Far from That's it. Right. We're just saying, please test um, what you've been doing so far. So, Mario, it's just such a great interview. I'm so pleased you came on. Could you please, um, before you pray for the listeners, we'll finish with your prayer. But before that, could you advise Christians when they're reaching out to people in the New Age, you know, what kind of things to say, what, what maybe not to say? For sure. Uh, that's something I get asked a lot as well. And I think what's important for us trying to reach people in the new age uh, to recognize is the spiritual realm. Uh, I think that's uh, of most important. If you have been involved in it, you recognize that it is there and we are dealing with uh, problems that come from there. Even uh, non-belief comes from the demonic realm. So I always try and help people to keep their eyes on the spirit, go into fasting and prayer. Sometimes uh, praying and fasting for someone and not even saying a word to them is what God would want you to do. Um, Sometimes, uh, you know, I always pray for wisdom and discernment because there's times where it's not the right time to even say anything to certain people. And you have to have the Holy Spirit guiding you to put the seeds of truth at the right times and do it gently and lovingly. Yeah. Um, I understand too, like for myself, when I was involved in this, I had given my entire life to this. It was my career, you know, mm-hmm. like, so um, you're, sometimes you can be taking something very precious to someone, you know, and, and showing them that it's false and that's not easy. So yeah, care- the thing. yeah caringly, yeah. lovingly, prayfully, uh, deal with the situation. Every situation's, um, you know, different. I, I couldn't give you like a four step instruction because everybody is different. And that is why you need to see God and the Holy Spirit and how God would want to deal uh, with that situation. But I guarantee he's going to want you to pray for them. 
uh, get uh, prayer is powerful. If you have a church, you get their name in. Uh, I know people who do prayer lines. You can go online and put their name in a ministry, and then that goes out, and uh, mm-hmm. thousands of people will go and start praying for those people. So pray for them, fast for them, uh, and and pray for yourself to have wisdom and understanding to know, okay, this is a place where I can kind of, oh, you're into this? Well, have you ever thought about it this way, you know, that you could be contacting spirits and other things like that, you know, and and uh, just pray for them, and I'll, I'll pray for them as well over here, but uh, God is mighty to save, and he is mm-hmm. saving people uh, from that, so believe in it, and uh, go boldly with the gospel, which is the power of God to save them. Amen. Can you pre- please now pray um, for the listeners now, Mario? For sure. Thanks. Thank you. Father God, I thank you so much that uh, you brought me and our, my sister in Christ here today to have this fantastic conversation. Lord, we would just pray that it would edify everyone listening. And to those listening who do not know this as the truth, Father, that the Holy Spirit would begin to open their eyes and open their hearts. That if they are bound to spiritual deception, that they would come to the full knowledge of those things so that they can give themselves to you, Lord, and and repent and turn from those ways. Father, many people are seeking for spiritual fulfillment, and that is often what leads them in this direction. But only you, Lord, can be the full fulfillment that really uh, fills us from the bottom of our soul. So, Father, anyone who does not know you and is bound in this, we just pray for their salvation, that they would be used by you for an amazing purpose in this life, the calling that you have for them, and that their testimony would go out and it would be used to bring other people into your glorious kingdom. Father, we thank you so much. We just ask that you bless every single listener with all the things that are from you that are so, so good. You are the righteous and holy judge. We love you, and we ask all these things in the name of the most precious and holy Son. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Well, thank you so much, Mario. And my headache is now gone, so praise Ah, the Lord. Ah, awesome. Praise (laughs) the Lord. Cool. (laughs) That's awesome. Thanks so much. And everybody who's listening, you can find Mario's information on my blog as well. So check out my blog later if, if you can't find his information and I hope you were also encouraged and please tune in again next time for another powerful testimony of Christ transforming love and power. Thank you all and God bless you. The views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of Eternal Radio. Eternal Radio. The preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful.